Thanks, Beck. Let's get to yesterday's big public debut for Coinbase. Stock opened at $381 a share, up 52% from if its reference price. It initially rocketed higher with an intraday high of $429 before cooling off, closing at $328. Gives uh, Coinbase a market cap of nearly $86 billion on a fully diluted basis, and it's uh, called sharply higher uh, this ever. Coinbase was the NASDAQ's first ever direct listing. The company designed its public debut to attract retail investors. TD Ameritrade says Coinbase accounted for approximately 10% of its equity retail trades yesterday. And joining us now is J.J. Kinahan, Chief Market Strategist at TD Ameritrade. It's J.J., we're, now we have Coinbase, so we, we can legitim legitimately talk about crypto and Bitcoin and digital uh, assets in an equity context, I guess. Prior to that, did you need to bone up on, on how everything works and how to think? You know, you're a VIX guy and an exchange guy, and, you know, you watch all the technical indicators in the stock market we've watched for years. You've got to put on an entirely new hat, but at least now there's a, a, an equity uh, that is based on, on trading in these things. It's weird, though. You ready? Yeah, you well, yeah, Joe, I, I think, you know, you've been around a long time as have I, and I, I, it reminds me a bit of the late 90s in terms of when the Internet was first starting. Uh, the conversation you, Becky, and Andrew were having at the top of the show I thought was really interesting in that, uh, as you said, we'll see where this goes overall, particularly for blockchain and the uses that come there. So I think that you, you combine this with, you know, Tesla putting, it on their putting crypto on their balance sheet, than this, so two events back to back that I think really take it into a much more, if you will, legitimate uh, usage and a legitimate companies uh, working with it, et cetera. So with that, I think that really the exciting part of this is still to come in the next 10 to 20 years in terms of how this will develop. Because as we saw with the internet, the things that actually came out first weren't necessarily where we are today and nobody really knew where it would take us because there is still a lot of regulation, et cetera, around this in terms of, you know, how governments will let people ultimately use it. And as you said, ease of use. It's very difficult to go into your grocery store and use uh, a crypto to pay for it, et cetera. So, I, I, again, there, it's an exciting time because there's a lot to go going on in that space overall, and we'll see what ultimately becomes of it. But for right now, you know, so many particularly younger investors are very excited about what's going on in there. Right, it reminds me a little bit of a lot of different things, but almost a commodity, uh, a gold, or, or so yeah. I'm not sure how to even think about Coinbase, whether it's an exchange, whether it should be worth more than every other exchange around. Is, is that really what, what it is at this point? I, I guess it is, we gotta accept these things. We gotta you know, teach old dogs new tricks. Yeah, it, again, it's just a different way of people uh, trying to become involved in something to invest in. I will say this uh, overall. We'll see, you know, the, the one thing that I still question a little bit, people are making the parallel to gold. Uh, and, and it may be that during a recession or things like that, it does hold its value better than other things. But it's, it's really only existed as a tradable product. You know, the CME has listed futures for a couple of years here and other exchanges, et cetera. So we'll say that somewhere in eight to 10 years, people have truly been able to trade it. We haven't had a big sell-off during that time. So we'll see how it performs when other assets start to decline. And I think that's really the next question that has to be answered. Yeah, we've had some indications, although it was a while. We've had indications that it was correlated with risk on assets, and, and we'll see. You look at gold and, and people that have been gold bugs for a long time, JJ, and you know, the, the names are familiar. Everything that they wanted to happen to get gold to $3,000 or $5,000 or wherever, it's all happened. It's all happened with the Fed. Uh, we've even got inflation fears. Uh, you know, there's been times where we've had some geopolitical issues that, that seems like gold should move, and it has not. And that's what's got people, some people thinking that, that some of that interest has moved into, into Bitcoin in, instead of gold. You can just look at the chart. I don't know. Gold could, could come back at any time, and 
uh, based on you know how easy we stay with, with the Fed and central banks around the world, all that, and, and inflationary expectations. We've had a couple of scary reports up the PPI and the CPI. Look at that, seventeen hundred dollars. When did it hit seventeen hundred dollars first? Ten years ago? Maybe not that long. Yeah, ago. but 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 no. But with that, Joe, let's face it. Stocks have just been so attractive during that time. Uh, the, for, you know, the easy money, et cetera. It, it, being in the stock market has still been the best place to be. And so because of that, I also think that some of the demand for some of the commodities, particularly gold, has stayed a little bit depressed. So, again, uh, we yeah. haven't had a, you know, we've had, we've, had sh we've had short sell-offs, but we haven't had any kind of an extended sell-off. And yeah. I think that is truly going to be the test for Bitcoin. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.